In this video, we're going to look at the case of adding two linear demand curves together and see how it's done and see why it's done that way. So suppose you're given two inverse demand curves, like the ones right here. Uh, the first demand curve is, this is actually an inverse because it's the P equals form. But P equals 10 minus 2Q. Let's just graph that real quickly here. The y-intercept is 10 on the P axis and it goes down at, with a slope of minus 2, so it's going to intersect the uh, q-axis at 5. And then the second demand curve, say for a different segment of the economy, is 5, p equals 5 minus q for the inverse demand. So let's graph that. The y-intercept will be at 5, and it will go down at a slope of minus 1, and so it will also hit the q-axis at 5. Okay, so let me color that differently here. Uh, okay, bright blue. So given these two different demand curves, uh, how do we add them together to get a total demand curve for the whole market? First let's do this graphically and then let's do it with an uh, equation to see what the equations, there will actually be two equations that we need to describe this resulting shape uh, in the end. So again, remember what, that what a demand curve tells us is what quantity will be demanded at each price. And we see here along demand curve 1 that at a price of $10, quantity of 0 will be demanded. At a price of $6, a quantity of 2 will be demanded. And at a price of 0, 5 will be demanded. Looking at the inverse demand curve 2, the blue one, uh, at any price above 5, 0 will be demanded. Okay, so we, we call the price 5 here a choke price because at a price of 5, 0 will be demanded by the blue group. Uh, but at the first demand group, they will have a choke price of 10. So graphically, if you want to see how this uh, adding process is going to work, you got to remember that we're adding quantities at each price. We're adding quantities at each price. So let's start down at a price of 0. Let's just start there. Uh, and let me add some, I'll add some points and then we can see what the resulting shape is going to look at, look like when we see the, the uh, resulting logic. So uh, at a price of zero, if the first group is going to want five units and the second group at a price of zero also wants five units, right? quantity demanded will both be 5 for each of the groups, then what's the total quantity demanded going to be? Well, it's going to be 10 at a price of 0. So let me label these axes just to make sure it's, it's clear, but uh, we, ought to, we ought to be familiar with this. Let me move that Q up here. Um, so at a price of 0, we know what the total demand function has to give us as an answer is a quantity of 10 at a price of 0. So let me draw a little circle there for our first point. All right. Now, let's go up to a price of $1. At a price of $1, the blue line says it's go people will want to buy four units. The black line says that first group of people are going to want to buy four and a half units. And so the total demand the total quantity demanded at, at a price of one dollar has to be four plus four and a half or nine and a half units. So I'll put a little dot there. So let's just keep doing this. At, at a price of two, group one will want four units, group two will want three, and so that's a total of seven. Oh, I'm sorry, I added these two wrong just a second ago. Four plus four and a half is going to be eight and a half. All right, so that's going to be the quantity demanded at 1. Quantity demanded at 2 will be 3 plus 4 is 7. So let me just copy this dot and move it up here to 7 units. At a price of $3, there will be 2 units demanded by the second group and 3.5 and by the first group. So 3.5 plus 2 is going to be 5.5. So let me move 
that dot right there. Uh, at a price of four, it'll be one, and three is a total of four. All right. At a price of five dollars, there will be nothing demanded from the blue group, and two and a half from the second group, and so that's just going to be a total of two and a half. So what about at a price of six? Well, at a price of six, this blue group is not in the market anymore. So they're totally out of the game. So we're just going to be on the first demand curve for the first group, right? So really, from this point forward, all we're going to be dealing with is a straight line that is the demand curve for the top group. And let, so let me draw a line through those other points as well. All right, so you, you see what shape we're going to be getting when we add those two demand curves together. It's not going to just be uh, one straight line. It's actually going to be the demand curve for the higher demanding group, group one, from a price of 10 down to a price of 5. But then once we get a blow, blow a price of 5, then this group, uh, the blue group, group two, is going to get involved in the situation. And so what you need when you have two different linear demand curves to describe the total of both demand curves is normally going to be two different linear equations, one straight line equation that's valid in this region, and another straight line that's valid in this lower region, and then you have to describe that to people. So uh, what we can say already here is, uh, the total demand is going to be as long as we're in a price um, from 10 down to five dollars the equation is going to be P equals 10 minus 2 Q or uh, the textbooks sometimes like you to instead write the demand function instead of the inverse demand. So let me just go ahead and solve this for Q. Uh, the demand equation would be Q equals 5 minus 1 half Q, right, minus, minus 1 half P, right? So if your textbook prefers you to use the demand function with the Q as a function of P, then you could say the same thing there. It's going to be P equals 5 minus 0.5P. Sorry, Q equals. Um, but then we need another equation to describe what's happening down here. Let me go ahead and solve this. Uh, this that's easy in this case. It's going to be the, the demand function written Q as a function of P will be Q equals 5 minus P. Okay. Um, so how do we get this equation of a line down here? Well, one way is just to go through the process that we just did and observe that if we continued this line all the way up to the p-axis it's going to look something like that and we could figure out what the equation is going to look like. Here, let me make that in red. Okay, But uh, an easier way to do that is just to add the two demand functions together and when I say add the demand functions you have to actually use the technically what is the demand function, the Q equals form, to get that equation. So what we would want to do is add this function, Q equals 5 minus 0.5P, to this one, Q equals 5 minus P. And let's see what we get. So the total when we add those two add those two together, we're going to get that Q equals and we're not adding the Q's together, we're adding, you know, what is the Q on the right side. So 
5 and 5 is 10. And then minus 0.5p, add that to 1 minus 1p, you get minus 1.5p. That is what you get when you add those two equations together. What this is, is the equation of this red line. It's the equation of the red line. Now let's, let's verify that that's true. Let's solve this, because it's, it's easier to graph the inverse of that. So let's solve this for p. And what you get is uh, p equals 6.66666. I'll just round this off to um, 6.67 minus 0.666666 times q. And that's that red line. You see the y-intercept on the p-axis there is a little bit less than 7, so 6.67. And then the, the slope is down 6.67 over 10 over the entire course of that red line. And so that's the right equation when you just add the right sides of those together. You get the total Q for two markets. And so what, what we're saying here is to get the bottom part of this equation when the price is less than 5, that's how, how you can get that bottom part of that equation. Add the two equations together when they're written as Q equals. So P at $5 and below, the demand function is going to be Q equals 6 point, sorry, Q equals 10 minus 1.5 times P, or if your textbook prefers you, or if you need to write it the other way, just solve that for P and you get the 6.67 minus 0.667 times Q. So that's how you add two linear demand functions together.